is a canvas and paint in my mind. Colors dance, spill outside the lines. I refuse to settle, never the black and white. Rock the neons until the day I die. I'm on a constant search to make my heart swell. Bite off too much, shoot like hell. Have my nights spent. Hey everyone, it's Rhonda here, a uh, design team member for Gone Artsy. And um, today I'm going to show you how to use the paper twist uh, that Deb now carries in the shop, along with this real fun, cute little Darcy Angel doll. Um, now, as I am uh, showing all of you this, uh, the original recording did not uh, take. So I'm going to voice over the project and if you have any questions just simply leave us a comment below and we'll get back with you and this here is the paper twist that Deb carries this is in the natural and she has it in various other colors and the descriptions of products used will also be in the uh, or the links will be in the description box below so in the meantime just sit back and take a little gander at the video and I do apologize for having to do it this way but I wanted you to see everything from beginning to end and um, enjoy the music so again this here is the paper twist that Deb carries in the shop and um, she has it in a lot of different colors now, <clears throat> what I wanted to show you all is these fun little paper dolls that I had done years ago. Um, and this here is the paper mache angel doll from Darcy that Deb carries in the shop. And it's a nice little size doll um, that you can do anything with. Uh, but as I was saying years ago, I had made these um, paper twist dolls and I wanted to do a little bit of a demonstration with one for you all to see and here I am telling you how you can you know paint a face on if you wish but I'm going to keep mine uh, like the little Amish dolls that have no face and right here I'm showing you how you untwist the uh, paper twist it's real easy just keep working it and unfolding it there's a lot of different uses for this I even think they're absolutely beautiful to wrap packages with um, if you like that and you can leave it you know completely wound and use it you know like a cording you don't necessarily have to unwind it it's just your choice and you can spray them or paint them for added depth and color of course and as I continue to unwrap here There's a few times that I have to come out of shot, so I want to apologize to you now for that. And here I'm taking a measurement because what I'm going to be doing is cutting for the skirt part for the little doll and right here these scissors these laser cut scissors Deb also carries in the shop as you can see they have the laser to help guide you for cutting straighter lines pretty awesome and you can get those in the shop
not for sure what I was actually explaining here. <laughs> I just really wish it had uh, picked up the recording, but unfortunately it didn't. Okay, now what I'm doing here is I'm just going to take this piece that I had cut about 8 inches, and I'm going to cut that in half for a 4 inch piece. Now there's various ways of making these dolls. Uh, some folks have used the real cute uh, clothespins, you know, the ones that um, <clears throat> they have the, like the balls on top. You can use those. Um, and of course you can get paper mache's, you know, taller. Okay, what I'm doing here is, I know what I'm doing here now, uh, the sleeve. The sleeve part of the doll. What I've now, what it, <clears throat> excuse me, what you do here is I took two pieces and I'm uh, gluing them in half. Now I'll make a correction real quick right here. Those are not, I don't believe those are the four inch pieces. Uh, I probably cut them down to um, three inches. And I'm going to set that piece aside. And here is the sleeve one of the sleeves that I have got going. And as that dries, we'll go a little further and I'll show you how uh, I've done the sleeve. Now on these pieces here, they are about three inches, I believe, that I'm moving to the side. Okay, now then this piece right here, which should be about four inches. And we're going to gather that. And this is going to be the outside skirt of the doll. Now, if you want, you can cut your pieces longer than what I have done. And then you can wire that. And then as you see here, fold it down. So that way you can make you know a different type of a collar for around your doll if you wish. Like so. But now all I'm going to do is just take each piece and I'm going to glue it right at the neckline of the paper doll. And this is a, is this glue that I'm using is called Journey Glaze. Uh, Deb also sells various adhesives in the Gone Artsy Shop. And I'm going to start this at the very back because there is a gold cord. Because you can make this into an ornament. I'm going to start it right but up against the gold cord. And this glue dries and adheres pretty quickly. So that's why I opted to use that versus, say, hot glue. Because I didn't want that clumpy glue from the hot glue to be around the neck area. And this process, it'll take, take just a little bit to do it because I wanted to demo, you know, unt untwisting the cording and showing you all that. And here I am in twisting. And I did four of these for this size doll. Just about got it all completed. And 
and again we'll gather just sort of fan that edge there out and again glue and then place it right up next to the first piece that we did give it a bit of a hold Again, this glue adheres pretty quickly. And we'll take our third strip. adhere that again right up to the second one that I have glued on. Now you can add as many layers to these as you want because the more layers the more fuller that the doll's dress will be. And you can add you know variegated links. And then here I'm going to glue, as I'm going to call them, the seams of each piece. Just give it a little bit of a tack down so that way it doesn't separate so much. Again, gluing the seam. And now we'll add our last panel <clears throat> to our skirt. Again, gathering like we have the others. the adhesive and going it down right alongside the other the first and the previous panel or section <clears throat> excuse me again this glue adheres rather quick which is one reason why I absolutely love it and um, next we will glue our seams as I'm referring them to here. This twist paper is really easy to work with. Probably the hardest part is just giving it an untwist. You know, it just takes just a just a few minutes to untwist. And you can cut it whatever lengths that you want. Again, like I said earlier, I think it's fabulous around presents. I was first introduced to the twist paper uh, in the early 90s uh, where I worked. There was a craft shop next to us and she uh, I was fortunate enough that she started doing and uh, I was a, I'm a hairdresser by trade so 
she got a lot of my tips <laughs> uh, at the craft shop. And it was just right next door. You walked right out of our door into her door. And um, so, yeah, uh, that's where I first was introduced to the twist paper. And she would do craft classes. And um, it was a lot of fun. Now, here I have taken another section of the twist paper. And uh, it's three inches. And all I did was fold that piece in half and then I rounded the end and then I'm going to gather the top and glue these in between the seams as we're going to call them like so. And this will be another layer to the little dress. Just giving it a moment to adhere. Now if you have like the decorative scissors, uh, that would be fantastic to use to give your uh, skirt tails a different look. Again, I just folded my little <clears throat> three inch piece in half and then rounded the ends and I'm going to glue another one again doing these in between the seams kind of like a, a brick layer type I guess you could say plus this hides the seams a little bit from the of the first layer Here, I'm just double checking on that measurement that it was three inches. Approximately. Now we're going to take the third panel and do the same thing again. Again, if you wanted to, you could cut these sections longer and um, attach them on uh, going the opposite direction, wire them, and then pull them down over the wiring. Uh, I had pre-cut mine, and they weren't quite long enough for that. so. That's why I opted to do the gluing technique instead. And here we go, attaching the last panel. onto the doll. Now these are absolutely great you know to uh, make and give for gifts. Uh, this is a great little project to do with the kids during you know right before the holidays if you want to make these into angels uh, or you could just you know make these into really cutesy cutesy little you know dolls. Um, great little project to do with uh, say because growing up uh, my cousins and I always had slumber parties so if you're having a slumber party these are great little things for the girls to make something that they can use as a keepsake uh, they can make them for their teachers at Christmas time 
you can do them for the neighbors but um, of course I think it's great getting the kids involved in crafts you know it keep, keeps their mind active and um, being very creative with things so uh, again this is a great little project for that or they can make them for their girlfriends but this particular project I have a small tree and I'm going to place this on top of that small tree it probably only stands about two, two foot tall so you can make uh, not only Christmas ornaments or you can make P you know uh, shelf sitters they can uh, be fun little tree topper ornaments Now the next thing I'm doing here, I'm just, you know, whatever, whatever you have, a pen, a pencil, a marker, uh, this, I'm using a wooden skewer, uh, just to curl my ends up on that outer layer a little bit more, just to give it some more character and some dimension. Here I'm having to trim just a little bit of it. Now with this twist paper, you will have to uh, <clears throat> work with that just a little bit, but it's not that hard. And I had to go back in and do just a little more gluing around the neckline. just to secure it down just a little bit more. And that's what I'm doing here. Just making sure all that is secure around there. Again, this journey glaze dries nice and quick, so that uh, that makes you know working on your project absolutely wonderful so that way you're not waiting now this beautiful piece of lace is off of one of the uh, collars that Deb had carried in the store it was the lace and chiffon collar um, I had used the chiffon pieces to create a fascinator uh, back during we did uh, derby themed projects back in May and this is the lace it was a double layer lace and I separated it because the lace is so pretty and I wanted to use it for another project so I've decided to use it on this piece as well and I wasn't too sure on my length and everything so the next time I come back I will have that attached and we'll continue on with more of the project so just stay with us and I'll be right back uh, showing where the lace is attached and we'll continue on. Thanks.
All right, now we're back. And as you can see here, I got the lace attached, which was not too difficult to do at all. And I just hot glued it around. And here I'm just uh, working the um, outer layer, trying to give that a little bit more dimension. And I'm giving the inside layer uh, a little more lift just to make the skirt part fuller. That's the fun part about the twist paper. Now another thing that I could have done uh, where I just added four panels you could probably add additional panels which would also in turn make the skirt fuller. Now here I'm going to tell you all about the arm or the sleeve excuse me the sleeve of the dress and showing you how to do it. Again, what I did was I cut uh, a piece of the twist paper to the desired length that I needed it for for this size doll. And I had, as you can see at the bottom of the screen there, I took them, took this piece and cut it in half. And I glued those together side by side. And I had set that aside to dry while we worked on the skirt of the doll. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to gather all that together like so. Get it as even as possible and I'm going to come in on it. I think I come in about a quarter of an inch. Maybe just a little bit more and I'm gathering that all up nice and tightly and I'm kind of giving it a smoosh myself. And I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to wrap it around there. Okay. Give it some a good twist. Again, I had to come out a shot here so I could get it twisted. And I'm just giving it, you know, a few more twists, getting it tighter. And the wire that I'm using is what I have saved off of my uh, mulberry flowers. And uh, here I'm just mashing that down where it snipped it. Now the next thing here, but yes, yeah, save all your wires off your mulberry flowers. They're wonderful to use for projects like this. Now what I'm going to do is work this and separate it. And then I'm going to fold that under. Okay. And I just got to keep working with it. Keep working with it. it takes just a little bit of work but you get to kind of get that all twisted around and turned inside out. Now you can also fill the sleeves with polyfill if you wanted to. It's just your choice. I opted not to. Again I was as I was recording this I was you know doing a lot of things to save on time for video sake purposes so that's why I did not fill the sleeve. Now the next thing I'm going to do, once you get that all turned and worked and everything to where it looks like the end of a sleeve. Okay, here's where I had to come out of shot for just a moment. As I was adjusting and separating that sleeve a little bit more to get it turned inward. Then we're going to take some glue and we're going to run it down one side of the sleeve like so. Oh, my glue bottle clogged up on me a little bit. I have a really bad habit of not putting my lid back on while I'm not using it. So, ah, now we got it all unclogged. I'm running a bead of glue down one side. So I can glue 
the other side. Together. <clears throat> now when you're doing bigger dolls, of course, taller dolls, um, you'll want to um, make your sleeves longer. So you just kind of got to adjust the length of your sleeves according to the size of your doll. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take and gather in the other end of the sleeve and we're going to wire it. Now you can take the uh, two pieces. Here's where I'm showing you how it's going to go across the back of the doll. So then you have your sleeve. And of course, I want you to keep in mind that uh, the cord. Now we're going to twist that a little bit, mush it together. My terminology, anyways. Now you can take these two pieces, and we'll repeat that with this one as well. Just trying to puff the sleeve here. Again, if you wanted to, you could fill them with polyfill. It's just your choice. Now what I'm going to show you here is where I'm explaining that you can wire the two together uh, and then place them across the back. Of your doll like so but I chose to not do it that way because my arms weren't quite coming together like I wanted them to so I just wired them each individually as you will see here Because this is going to be an angel anyway so uh, I didn't mind that because I was able to hide the mechanics just trimming up some of the paper twist And we have one sleeve completed. And you can work it out to puff it up some more. And then this will attach onto one side of the doll. I was just doing some measuring here. Now I'm just going to, uh, I adhered this with uh, hot glue. At the time of making the video, it was to uh, save on time. So there we have the one arm adhered. And I'll repeat the same process with the other sleeve by gathering it and also wiring it.
and that's what I'm doing here. And smashing down that wire and giving it another little bit of a trim of the uh, paper twist. And there we go with our second arm. Uh, here I said it looked like a, a bam bam mallet, I guess, club from the cartoon The Flintstones. <laughs> and again, I will repeat the process of using hot glue to adhere the arm. On the doll. Again, a fun little project to do with the kiddos. Don't take long at all. The paper twist is easy to work with. And you may even be able to find some books on um, paper twist creating, maybe paper doll, paper twist dolls creating uh, or crafting. Um, so that way you can create other, other types of dolls, taller dolls, bigger dolls different types of dolls. I know Deb had mentioned to me uh, about a piece that she has made out of paper twist. So I'm hoping that she gives us a nice demonstration in class on that fun piece. So stay tuned. Hopefully she will uh, get to do it. Okay, now that the doll's arms are attached, I have taken one of these fun butterflies, um, nylon butterflies, and I was going to take the antlers or the antennas and cut them off, but then I opted to give them a little bit of a twist and turned them around and joined them in with the other fun swirly wires that's on the butterfly. So I ended up not having to uh, cut those off. But this little idea I had seen uh, from another crafter where she had used these for angel wings. And I apologize because I do not know her name. Uh, and she had created, again, she had made angels using these. And I thought, well, what a fun little angel wing to use. So I had those on hand and then after I pulled these out I remembered that I had some even bigger uh, but I had already adhered this on so next time I'll use the bigger ones. And if you have angel wings there you go or you could make your own. Uh, just get you a template to cut you some out <coughs> excuse me and then you could uh, decorate those up and attach them and here we go adhering it on to the back of the doll and this helps hide the mechanics as well But I wish I had remembered the, the bigger butterflies. So, she's a young angel. Her wings are still small. <laughs> and I'm just doing some adjusting with the wings. Just 
just doing some more adjusting and fluffing. And as you can see, this is what we have so far with our fun little angel doll. And this is some of the wonderful seam binding that Deb carries in this shop. Uh, this is a cream, and she has several, several colors to choose from, including white. So if there isn't a color that she has that you want, you can always purchase the white and uh, custom dye it. Uh, to a color that you would like. And if you have not seen, uh, but if you go to the, um, here at the Gone Artsy YouTube channel and head down to some of our earlier videos, you will see some videos that Deb has done on dyeing techniques. So there's chemical dyeing, natural dyeing, products that I would have never imagined even using to dye with. So be sure to check that out. And here I'm giving you a quick tip on how to get those nice little points on your ribbons. And you just take your ribbon, fold it in half, give it a little snip at an angle. And voila, this is a fun Martha Stewart trick I learned many years ago uh, from her show. And I'm just going to make a bow here. But you can also check out the Gone Artsy fan page on Facebook in the notes section. And there are several tips on dying there as well. So if you have um, items that you just absolutely love but you want to give it color, there you go. Now I'm going to attach the seam binding right there on the angel. Again, this will also have the mechanics of it where we glued it around the uh, neck. And I'll take a little bit more off of that tail. Trying to get that in the best frame possible for you guys. Now I've opted to add some flowers. Little bitty teeny tiny rosebuds that I'll be using. Again, save your stems off of your flowers because they come in great for little projects. Now for these little dolls, you can create some really cute little bouquets. Uh, for them to be holding or little signs to be holding. You could probably either, if you did the arms long enough, uh, glue them to where they're together and like they're holding a bouquet. That would be really cute. Now, I came out of shot right here to glue these rosebuds on the center of the bow. 
because these rosebuds are very tiny so uh, it made it a little bit difficult when they were far away <laughs> adhered a white one and two pink ones onto this. I did this project to keep it uh, very subtle, uh, very neutral colors. One, because I, I, well, I just like that. And there they are. And I'm just getting a few things out of the way. And the next thing I want to show you that, I'm, that I have applied to the doll is this fun synthetic hair. Um, now, I did not do this on camera because it's a little time consuming. And um, as I return, were uh, in the video in uh, in the video uh, the hair will already be added and uh, you'll see the finished product of the little angel doll but yes I did apply the hair and if you use the synthetic hair uh, this particular brand that I have used does have tips on how to apply the hair so but yes it is just a little bit time consuming not too bad so here I was making the decision whether to do it on camera or off and I don't think you all wanted to be bored to death watching uh, hair be glued on <laughs> so Yes. So when I come back, uh, you will get to see the finished doll in addition to uh, uh, a couple little, little tips on what to do and not do with the synthetic hair. And again, thank you all so much for being patient. Um, really wish this had recorded as it in his in its original broadcast but stay tuned and I'll be back thanks again so much all right everybody I'm back and here is our finished little project I've added the hair and I went back and I added in some beading and I added this cute little bow. Look, like she has a barrette in her hair. And oh, I got a piece of glue stuck to me. No, that's her. Tire. Okay. Uh, and this beautiful little uh, bow pearl embellishment is in the Gone Artsy shop. So be sure to check that out. And then here is the back side of her see her little angel wings that I've just used one of those really large butterflies on and after I added that I think I have some that are even bigger and there you go fun little paper doll using the twist paper and uh, if you've ever heard of, like the corn shuck dolls like they used to make back in the good old days uh, this is what it kind of puts me in the mind of as well.
but yeah a fun little activity and again you could uh, you know make a bouquet for her to hold now on this hair this was some that I had had um, a, a relative in fact gave it to me uh, you can find them in your craft stores I have it in the brown and the blonde a uh, little bit of tip when you go to pull it out of your bag okay pull it all at one time and kind of separate it it is synthetic it's hand washable and the back side kind of explains to you and tells you how to do it um, <clears throat> It's not easy to work with, and it's a uh, pain in the butt with hot glue. So, when you go to pull the hair apart, don't be very careful because, see, it kind of frays the hair, and you don't want that to happen. So, yeah, I had a nice little bit of a, a wad of hair there that I'm not going to be able to do anything with because it's just too ugly now after I frayed it. But hey, live and learn, right? Live and learn. Okay. And again, I used some of the beautiful seam binding from the shop. And the twist paper comes in a lot of colors. So be sure to check those out. And again, you can make these in bigger sizes. And, you know, uh, Google them or um, um, YouTube. Because there's so many different ways that you can use twist paper to make these little dolls. And again, I've used a little uh, paper mache angel doll that Deb sells in the shop. Okay. And stay tuned because I'll have some still pictures at the end. Thanks again for joining us. And be sure to share with us over on the Gone Artsy fan page your creations that you make using the... Um, gone artsy products because we sure would love to see your beautiful creations okay everyone thanks for joining us for class be on the lookout for more fabulous projects by the design team all right everyone take care and until next time bye bye